Peter Paul Rubens, Wikipedia article audio. Sir Peter Paul Rubens Dutch, S, 28 June 1577 May 30, 1640 was a Flemish artist. He is considered the most influential artist of Flemish Baroque tradition. Rubens' highly charged compositions reference erudite aspects of classical and Christian history. His unique and immensely popular Baroque style emphasized movement, color, and sensuality, which followed the immediate, dramatic artistic style promoted in the Counter-Reformation. Rubens specialized in making altarpieces, portraits, landscapes, and history paintings of mythological and allegorical subjects. Biography In addition to running a large studio in Antwerp that produced paintings popular with nobility and art collectors throughout Europe, Rubens was a classically educated humanist scholar and diplomat who was knighted by both Philip IV of Spain and Charles I of England. Rubens was a prolific artist. The catalogue of his works by Michael Jaff lists 1,403 pieces, excluding numerous copies made in his workshop. His commissioned works were mostly history paintings, which included religious and mythological subjects, and hunt scenes. He painted portraits especially of friends and self-portraits and in later life painted several landscapes. Rubens designed tapestries and prints, as well as his own house. He also oversaw the ephemeral decorations of the royal entry into Antwerp by the Cardinal Infante Ferdinand in 1635. Early Life his drawings are predominantly very forceful but not overly detailed. He also made great use of oil sketches as preparatory studies. He was one of the last major artists to make consistent use of wooden panels as a support medium, even for very large works, but he used canvas as well, especially when the work needed to be sent a long distance. For altarpieces he sometimes painted on slate to reduce reflection problems. Apprenticeship Rubens was born in the city of Ziegen to Jan Rubens and Maria Pipe Lynx. He was named in honor of St. Peter and St. Paul, because he was born on their solemnity. His father, a Calvinist, and mother fled Antwerp for Cologne in 1568 after increased religious turmoil and persecution of Protestants during the rule of the Habsburg Netherlands by the Duke of Alba. Italy Jan Rubens became the legal advisor of Anna of Saxony, the second wife of William I of Orange, and settled at her court in Ziegen in 1570, fathering her daughter Christine who was born in 1571. Antwerp. Following Jan Rubens' imprisonment for the affair, Peter Paul Rubens was born in 1577. The family returned to Cologne the next year. In 1589, two years after his father's death, Rubens moved with his mother Maria Pipelinks to Antwerp, where he was raised as a Catholic. The Marie de Medici Cycle and Diplomatic Missions Religion figured prominently in much of his work, and Rubens later became one of the leading voices of the Catholic Counter-Reformation style of painting. In Antwerp, Rubens received a Renaissance humanist education, studying Latin and classical literature. By 14 he began his artistic apprenticeship with Tobias Veraegd. Subsequently, he studied under two of the city's leading painters of the time, the late Mannerist artists Adam van Neuert and Otto van Veen. Much of his earliest training involved copying earlier artists' works, such as woodcuts by Hans Holbein the Younger and Marcantonio Raimondi's engravings after Raphael. 
Rubens completed his education in 1598, at which time he entered the Guild of St. Luke as an independent master. Last Decade Death Descendants Art In 1600 Rubens travelled to Italy. He stopped first in Venice, where he saw paintings by Titian, Veronese, and Tintoretto, before settling in Mantua at the court of Duke Vincenzo I Gonzaga. The colouring and compositions of Veronese and Tintoretto had an immediate effect on Rubens's painting, and his later, mature style was profoundly influenced by Titian. With financial support from the Duke, Rubens travelled to Rome by way of Florence in 1601. There, he studied classical Greek and Roman art and copied works of the Italian masters. The Hellenistic sculpture Laocoon and his sons was especially influential on him, as was the art of Michelangelo, Raphael, and Leonardo da Vinci. He was also influenced by the recent, highly naturalistic paintings by Caravaggio. Rubens later made a copy of Caravaggio's Entombment of Christ and recommended his patron, the Duke of Mantua, to purchase the death of the Virgin. After his return to Antwerp he was instrumental in the acquisition of the Madonna of the Rosary for the St. Paul's Church in Antwerp. During this first stay in Rome, Rubens completed his first altarpiece commission, St. Helena with the True Cross for the Roman Church of Santa Croce in Jerusalem. Rubens travelled to Spain on a diplomatic mission in 1603, delivering gifts from the Gonzagas to the court of Philip III. While there, he studied the extensive collections of Raphael and Titian that had been collected by Philip II. He also painted an equestrian portrait of the Duke of Lerma during his stay that demonstrates the influence of works like Titian's Charles V at Mulberg. This journey marked the first of many during his career that combined art and diplomacy. He returned to Italy in 1604, where he remained for the next four years, first in Mantua and then in Genoa and Rome. In Genoa, Rubens painted numerous portraits, such as the Marchesa Brigida Spinola Doria, and the portrait of Maria di Antonio Serra Pallavicini in a style that influenced later paintings by Anthony van Dyck, Joshua Reynolds, and Thomas Gainsborough. He also began a book illustrating the palaces in the city, which was published in 1622 as Palazzi di Genova. From 1606 to 1608, he was mostly in Rome. During this period Rubens received, with the assistance of Cardinal Jacopo Serra, his most important commission to date for the high altar of the city's most fashionable new church, Santa Maria in Valle Sella also known as the Chisa Nuova. The subject was to be St. Gregory the Great and important local saints adoring an icon of the Virgin and Child. The first version, a single canvas, was immediately replaced by a second version on three slate panels that permits the actual miraculous holy image of the Santa Maria in Valle Sella to be revealed on important feast days by a removable copper cover, also painted by the artist. Rubens' experiences in Italy continued to influence his work. He continued to write many of his letters and correspondences in Italian, signed his name as Pietro Paolo Rubens, and spoke longingly of returning to the peninsula a hope that never materialized. Upon hearing of his mother's illness in 1608, Rubens planned his departure from Italy for Antwerp. However, she died before he arrived home. 
His return coincided with a period of renewed prosperity in the city with the signing of the Treaty of Antwerp in April 1609, which initiated the Twelve Years' Truce. In September 1609 Rubens was appointed as court painter by Albert VII, Archduke of Austria, and Infanta Isabella Clara Eugenia of Spain, sovereigns of the Low Countries. He received special permission to base his studio in Antwerp instead of at their court in Brussels, and to also work for other clients. He remained close to the Archduchess Isabella until her death in 1633, and was called upon not only as a painter but also as an ambassador and diplomat. Rubens further cemented his ties to the city when, on October 3, 1609, he married Isabella Brandt, the daughter of a leading Antwerp citizen and humanist, Jan Brandt. Albert Rubens, married Clara del Monte, Nicholas Rubens, Lord of Ramayan, married Constantia Hellman, Albert Marie Nicholas Peter Rubens, married Maria Catharina Vecmans, Peter Paul II Rubens, Philippe Nicholas, Helene Francoise Baptiste, married John London, Maria Constantia Rubens, married Lambert Frederick of Bronckhorst, Lord of Berlayer. In 1610 Rubens moved into a new house and studio that he designed. Now the Rubenschuss Museum, the Italian-influenced villa in the centre of Antwerp accommodated his workshop where he and his apprentices made most of the paintings, and his personal art collection and library, both among the most extensive in Antwerp. During this time he built up a studio with numerous students and assistants. His most famous pupil was the young Anthony van Dyck, who soon became the leading Flemish portraitist and collaborated frequently with Rubens. He also often collaborated with the many specialists active in the city, including the animal painter Franz Snyders, who contributed the eagle to Prometheus Bound, and his good friend the flower painter Jan Bruegel the Elder. Another house was built by Rubens to the north of Antwerp in the Polder village of Dole, Hoog Hughes, perhaps as an investment. The high house was built next to the village church. Altarpieces such as the raising of the cross and the descent from the cross for the Cathedral of Our Lady were particularly important in establishing Rubens as Flanders' leading painter shortly after his return. The raising of the cross, for example, demonstrates the artist's synthesis of Tintoretto's crucifixion for the Scuola Grande di San Rocco in Venice, Michelangelo's dynamic figures, and Rubens' own personal style. This painting has been held as a prime example of Baroque religious art. Rubens used the production of prints and book title pages, especially for his friend Balthasar Mortis, the owner of the large plant in Mortis Publishing House, to extend his fame throughout Europe during this part of his career. In 1618, Rubens embarked upon a printmaking enterprise by soliciting an unusual triple privilege to protect his designs in France, the Southern Netherlands, and United Provinces. He enlisted Lucas Vorstermann to engrave a number of his notable religious and mythological paintings, to which Rubens appended personal and professional dedications to noteworthy individuals in the Southern Netherlands, United Provinces, England, France, and Spain. With the exception of few etchings, Rubens left the printmaking to specialists, who included Lucas Vorstermann, Paulus Pontius, and Willem Paniels. He recruited a number of engravers trained by Christoffel Jäger, who he carefully schooled in the more vigorous style he wanted. Rubens also designed the last significant woodcuts before the 19th century revival in the technique. In 1621, the Queen Mother of France, Marie de Medici, 
commissioned Rubens to paint two large allegorical cycles celebrating her life and the life of her late husband, Henry IV, for the Luxembourg Palace in Paris. The Marie de Medici cycle was installed in 1625, and although he began work on the second series it was never completed. Marie was exiled from France in 1630 by her son, Louis XIII, and died in 1642 in the same house in Cologne where Rubens had lived as a child. After the end of the Twelve Years' Truce in 1621, the Spanish Habsburg rulers entrusted Rubens with a number of diplomatic missions. While in Paris in 1622 to discuss the Marie de Medici cycle, Rubens engaged in clandestine information gathering activities, which at the time was an important task of diplomats. He relied on his friendship with Nicolas Claude Fabry de Pieresque to get information on political developments in France. Between 1627 and 1630, Rubens' diplomatic career was particularly active, and he moved between the courts of Spain and England in an attempt to bring peace between the Spanish Netherlands and the United Provinces. He also made several trips to the Northern Netherlands as both an artist and a diplomat. At the courts he sometimes encountered the attitude that courtiers should not use their hands in any art or trade, but he was also received as a gentleman by many. Rubens was raised by Philip IV of Spain to the nobility in 1624 and knighted by Charles I of England in 1630. Philip IV confirmed Rubens' status as a knight a few months later. Rubens was awarded an honorary Master of Arts degree from Cambridge University in 1629. Rubens was in Madrid for eight months in 1628-1629. In addition to diplomatic negotiations, he executed several important works for Philip IV and private patrons. He also began a renewed study of Titian's paintings copying numerous works including the Madrid Fall of Man. During this stay, he befriended the court painter Diego Velázquez and the two planned to travel to Italy together the following year. Rubens, however, returned to Antwerp and Velázquez made the journey without him. His stay in Antwerp was brief, and he soon travelled on to London where he remained until April 1630. An important work from this period is the allegory of peace and war. It illustrates the artist's lively concern for peace, and was given to Charles I as a gift. While Rubens' international reputation with collectors and nobility abroad continued to grow during this decade, he and his workshop also continued to paint monumental paintings for local patrons in Antwerp. The Assumption of the Virgin Mary for the Cathedral of Antwerp is one prominent example. Rubens's last decade was spent in and around Antwerp. Major works for foreign patrons still occupied him, such as the ceiling paintings for the banqueting house at Inigo Jones's Palace of Whitehall, but he also explored more personal artistic directions. In 1630, Four years after the death of his first wife Isabella, the 53-year-old painter married his first wife's niece, the 16-year-old Helene Formant. Helene inspired the voluptuous figures in many of his paintings from the 1630s, including the Feast of Venus, the Three Graces and the Judgment of Paris. In the latter painting, which was made for the Spanish court, the artist's young wife was recognized by viewers in the figure of Venus. In an intimate portrait of her, Helene Formant in a fur wrap, also known as Het Pelskin, Rubens' wife is even partially modeled after classical sculptures of the Venus Pudica, such as the Medici Venus.
In 1635, Rubens bought an estate outside Antwerp, the Steyn, where he spent much of his time. Landscapes, such as his Chateau de Steyn with hunter and farmers returning from the fields, reflect the more personal nature of many of his later works. He also drew upon the Netherlandish traditions of Peter Bruegel the Elder for inspiration in later works like Flemish Kermis. Rubens died from heart failure, a result of his chronic gout, on May 30, 1640. He was interred in St. James Church, Antwerp. His epitaph read, Workshop D.O.M. slash Petrovs Pavlovs Revbenevs Ekes slash Yanis, Huia Serbis Senatoris slash Flofius Steini Toparka slash Key Intercedoras Quibus Ad Miraculum slash Exiluit Doctrini Historii Prisci slash Omniumc. Bonarum Ardiu. E.T. Elegantiaru. Dotes slash non sui tantum seculi slash sed et omnes evi slash appels disit miruit slash et gad regum principumc. Virorum amici tias slash gradum sibi facit slash a. Filippo IV. Hispaniarum indiarumc. Reach slash inter sanctiaris con cili scribas ad citus slash et ad carolv mamni britannii regem slash anno m dot dc dot xxix. Deligatus slash paces inter eistem principes mox initi slash fundamenta filiciter posud slash obiat anno sal. m dot dc dot xl dot triple x. Maitatus lxiv. Hoc momentum eclaris simo gavarcio slash olim petro pavlo revbenio consecratum slash a post eris huc us qui neglectum slash ruben ianus terpi masculina jam and extincta slash hoc anno m dot dcc dot lv. Pony curavit slash rd. Jonas Baptist. Jacobs de Paris. Hojus insignis ag calci e canonicus slash ex matri et avia rubinia nepos slash r dot i dot p slash slash. The artist had eight children, three with Isabella and five with Helen, his youngest child was born eight months after his death. Many of his descendants married into important noble families of Antwerp. Descendants by Isabella Brandt his nudes of various biblical and mythological women are especially well known. Painted in the Baroque tradition of depicting women as soft-bodied, passive, and highly sexualized beings, his nudes emphasize the concepts of fertility, desire, physical beauty, temptation, and virtue. Skillfully rendered, these paintings of nude women were undoubtedly created to appeal to his largely male audience of patrons. Additionally, Rubens was quite fond of painting full-figured women, giving rise to terms like Rubenchian or Rubenesque. And while the male gaze features heavily in Rubens's paintings of females generally, he brings multi-layered allegory and symbolism to his portraits. His large-scale cycle representing Marie de Medici's focuses on several classic female archetypes like the virgin, consort, wife, widow, and diplomatic regent. The inclusion of this iconography in his female portraits, along with his art depicting noble women of the day, served to elevate his female portrait sitters to the status and importance of his male portrait sitters. Rubens's depiction of males is equally stylized, replete with meaning, and quite the opposite of his female subjects. His male nudes represent highly athletic and large mythical or biblical men. Unlike his female nudes, most of his male nudes are depicted partially nude, with sashes, armor, or shadows shielding them from being completely unclothed. These men are twisting, reaching, bending, and grasping, all of which portrays his male subjects engaged in a great deal of physical, 
sometimes aggressive, action. The concepts Rubens artistically represents illustrate the male as powerful, capable, forceful, and compelling. The allegorical and symbolic subjects he painted reference the classic masculine tropes of athleticism, high achievement, valor in war, and civil authority. Male archetypes readily found in Rubens's paintings include the hero, husband, father, civic leader, king, and the battle-weary. Rubens was a great admirer of Leonardo da Vinci's work. Using an engraving done 50 years after Leonardo started his project on the Battle of Anghieri, Rubens did a masterly drawing of the battle which is now in the Louvre in Paris. The idea that an ancient copy of a lost artwork can be as important as the original is familiar to scholars, says Salvatore Settis, archaeologist and art historian. Selected Works Peter Paul Rubens works at the Royal Museums of Fine Arts, Brussels, Belgium. Lost Works Art Market the painting The Crucifixion, painted for the Church of Santa Croce in Gerusalemme, Rome, was imported to England in 1811. It was auctioned in 1812 and again in 1820 and 1821 but was lost at sea sometime after 1821. Equestrian Portrait of the Archduke Albert Susanna and the Elders now known only from engraving from 1620 by Lucas Vesterminand, Satyr, Nymph, Putty and Leopards now known only from engraving and, Judith Beheading Holofernes C. 1609 known only through the 1610 engraving by Cornelis Gall the Elder. Works destroyed in the bombardment of Brussels are the Madonna of the Rosary painted for the Royal Chapel of the Dominican Church, Brussels, Virgin adorned with flowers by Saint Anne, 1610 painted for the Church of the Carmelite Friars, Saint Job Triptych, 1613, painted for Saint Nicholas Church, Brussels, Cambyses appointing Otain's judge judgment of Solomon the last judgment that were decorations for the magistrates hall, Brussels, in the Kudenberg Palace fire there were several works by Rubens destroyed, like Nativity, Adoration of the Magi and Pentecost, the paintings Neptune and Amphitrite. Vision of Saint Hubert and Diana and nymphs surprised by satyrs was destroyed in the Friedrich Schein Flak Tower fire in 1945, the painting The Abduction of Proserpine was destroyed in the fire at Blenheim Palace, Oxfordshire, February 5, 1861, the painting Crucifixion with Mary, St. John, Magdalen, 1643 was destroyed in the English Civil War, English parliamentarians in the Queen's Chapel, Somerset House, London, 1643, the painting equestrian portrait of Philip IV of Spain was destroyed in the fire at Royal Alcazar of Madrid fire in 1734. A copy is in the Uffizi Gallery. The continents of Scipio was destroyed in a fire in the Western Exchange, Old Bond Street, London, March 1836. The painting The Lion Hunt was removed by Napoleon's agents from Schloss Schleisheim, near Munich, 1800 and was destroyed later in a fire at the Musée des Beaux-Arts de Bordeaux. Selected Exhibitions Notes Peter Paul Rubin's work at the Louvre Sources Peter Paul Rubin's works at the Victor Balaguer Museum Paintings from Rubin's workshop can be divided into three categories, those he painted by himself, those he painted in part, and those he only supervised as other painters produced them from his drawings or oil sketches. He had as was usual at the time, 
a large workshop with many apprentices and students, some of whom, such as Anthony Van Dyke, became famous in their own right. He also often subcontracted elements such as animals or still life in large compositions to specialists such as Franz Snyder's, or other artists such as Jacob Jordaens. Portrait of a Young Woman with a Rosary, Tissen Bornemisa Museum, Madrid C. 1609. Venus at the Mirror, 1615. Infanta Isabella Clara Eugenia, 1615. Kunsthistorisches Museum, Vienna. Virgin in Adoration Before the Christ Child, C. 1615. Diana Returning from Hunt, 1615. Gemaldi Gallery Alte Meister. Daniel in the Lion's Den, 1614-1616 National Gallery of Art Hippopotamus Hunt Rubens is known for the frenetic energy and lusty ebullience of his paintings. The Rape of the Daughters of Lysippus, c. 1617 Portrait of Marquesa Brigida Spinola Doria, 1606 Portrait of King Philip IV of Spain, c. 1628-1629 Portrait of Elizabeth of France 1628, Kunsthistorisches Museum Vienna Portrait of Ambrogio Spinola, c. 1627 National Gallery in Prague the Chateau Headstain with Hunter, c. 1635-8. Miracle of St. Hubert, painted together with Jan Bruegel, 1617. Landscape with the ruins of Mount Palatine in Rome, 1615. Landscape with milkmaids and cattle, 1618. Nymphs Filling the Horn of Plenty, 1615, together with Jan Bruegel the Elder. The Birth of the Milky Way, 1636-1637, Madrid, Museo del Prado. Venus and Adonis. Jupiter and Callisto, 1613, Museum Slinskaft of Hesse in Castle. Series on Maria de' Medici, The Flight from Blois Maria de' Medici's Arrival in Marseille The Education of the Princess, from the Maria de' Medici Cycle The Negotiations at Angoulême The Virgin of the Immaculate Conception, 1626-1628 Madrid, Museo del Prado the Holy Family 1630, Prado The Feast of Herods Samson and Delilah, 1609-1610 Created for his friend Nicholas II Rockox King Solomon, 1617 The Fall of the Damned, ca. 1620 Fortuna, 1638 Susanna and the Elders, 1608 The Triumph of the Virtue 1608 Hygieia, 1615 Prague, Lobkoe's Palace Ermit and Sleeping Angelica 1628 Simone and Iphigenia, 1615 Venus, Cupid, Baucis, and Ceres, 1612 Amor and Venus 1614 The Three Graces, 
1635, Prado. Rubens with Helen Formant and their son Peter Paul, 1639, now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Helena Formant in wedding dress, Detail J, the artist's second wife. Ca. 1630, now in the ALTE Pinacothec. Helena Formant with a carriage. 1639 Louvre Helene Formant with Rubens and their child, C. 1630 Venus and Cupid, 1640 Bathsheba at the Fountain, 1635 Venus, Mars and Cupid Pastoral Scene 1636 Portrait of Helene Formant, C. 1638 Kunsthistorisches Museum, Vienna Lion, C. 1614-1615 Black and yellow chalk, grey wash, heightened with white Peter Paul Rubens' son, Nicholas Rubens Lord of Ramayan, 1621 Isabella Brandt, 1621 Peter Paul Rubens, C.1620 S Young Woman with Folded Hands, circa 1629-1630 Missing Works by Rubens are at a Sotheby's auction on July 10, 2002, Rubens's painting Massacre of the Innocents, rediscovered not long before, sold for £49.5 million to Lord Thompson. At the end of 2013 this remained the record auction price for an old master painting. At a Christie's auction in 2012, Portrait of a Commander sold for £9.1 million despite a dispute over the authenticity so that Sotheby's refused to auction it as a Rubens.